Hi, so for our lecture today, we will continue to look into the ambiguity in programming. So we want to know what is uh, actually an ambiguity in a uh, grammar. Okay, so ambiguous. So uh, in a context of a free grammar, uh, a context free grammar, it is said that uh, to be ambiguous, the grammar will be ambiguous if there is more than one derivation tree for a particular string. For example, we have a string uh, produced here, var plus var multiple, multiplied by var. Okay, that is the string. So there are two derivation tree that can actually generate this string. So we say that uh, this grammar actually is ambiguous. Ambiguous means that there are different way to produce a string. Okay. Okay, so this example, in the example here, we can see that in order to produce var plus var uh, multiplied by var, there are two uh, derivation three here. Uh, the first derivation three is uh, for the left uh, most derivations and the, one, the other one is the right most derivations. Okay, so both of these three actually produce the same string, uh, var plus var multiple by fa. Okay, so that is ambiguous. So actually in the programming, it is not good to have an ambiguous, okay? Because the ambiguous grammar create confusions uh, when you do, when you want to do a syntax analyzer. Okay, so uh, for the ambiguous grammar, we need to do the eliminations means that we need to remove the ambiguity. So in this case, how? Uh, we remove the ambiguity using a precedence rule. We know that in mathematics, we have a precedence rule. A precedence rule means that if you have uh, operations like multiplication, division, add addition, and subtraction, multiplication and division is always take a precedence over additions and subtractions. And exponential tag uh, precedence over multiplication. This is a mathematical rule. So we can use this uh, and represent it in our grammar. So uh, if you look into the previous example, there are, there are two derivations. So we prefer the second one. Okay, we prefer the second one because we uh, we we want to use the precedence rules means that. We want the multiplication to take the precedence. Okay, so if you look into this uh, uh, tree diagram, so expression is equal to expression plus term. Okay, so they actually they replace it from the previous one. Expressions equals to expression plus expressions. Okay, so if you use that one, it will become. Uh, you also actually can replace the expression with expression times uh, multiplication multiplied by expressions. Okay, so we remove that to remove the ambiguity. We remove that and we introduce uh, the terms. Uh, term. So what we do is we make a grammar. We create a grammar. Expressions equals expression plus term. So this term actually is expression equals to term. Terms equals to term times factor. So you get here terms actually terms time factor. Okay, uh, expression also can be a term itself, and term can be a factor. So factor can be a variable. Okay, factor can be a variable, can be constants, can can be another expression. But in this case, we will look into uh, our output. Our string is a var plus var times a var. So we replace the factor as a Okay. So this would mean that uh, the in order to have the answer for expression, the, the, the end result expression here, we need to add the first expressions here, add it with term. So what is term? Term actually is terms time factor, which is var times var. So it means that we need to do var times var first in order to add it with variable. Okay, it is quite different from this example where 
we what we do in this example expressions here in order to do expressions time expressions so what we have to do is for this the first expressions here we need to do var plus var first var plus var so only then we multiply it with this var so this this is strong okay so that's why we need to remove the ambiguity in our grammar Okay, uh, the wrong grammar, uh, the grammar that have ambiguous um, uh, ambiguity, actually it will affect the output of the syntax analyzer. It will actually affect the semantic meaning. And semantic actually is the meaning of the program. Okay, because when the meaning is different, it will yield different result. It will generate different. Result. So that's, that is why it is important to remove ambiguity, eh? to eliminate ambiguity. <laughs> Another example of if statements. Uh, so normally we call, this is also a problem because uh, if statement, we, we normally have uh, two types. If statement alone and if statement with else. Yeah? So normally we call this problem as a dangling else. Eh? Dangling if else problem okay so for uh, this if else statement also there might be ambiguity ambiguous because uh, if you see the grammar here we have a statement goes to if statement so if statement here it can be the first one the, the second row here it also can be start from it also can be uh, instantiate from the third one here okay for example the first one it instantiate from the third third row okay the statement they, they use the if statement from the third row so you will real you will have this uh tree structure uh, the second diagram here the, the second tree structures here they replace the if statement with the second grammar second pro production rules then you get these kinds of grammar so which one is actually correct okay which one is actually correct so means that for this uh if statement they might have uh, two derivations for to produce the output but uh, although it can produce the same output the meaning of the the result letter would be different okay i give you an example <coughs> let's say we want to create an if statement for a problem like uh, for voting okay uh, for Malaysian people, in order to vote, in order for us to eligible to vote, we must be Malaysian, okay, and we must be, uh, for example, uh, 21 years old and above, okay, so that, that is the rules, huh? must be Malaysian and 21 years old and above, okay. Let's say we want to do a if statement for that, uh, for eligibility to vote. Okay, for example, for for this statement, so we write if okay if if uh, you are Malaysian okay I just write that uh, if you are Malaysian and uh, uh, then okay uh, then another statement here so another statement here would be would say then if you are twenty one years old and above okay and above then you are eligible to vote eligible okay then you are eligible eh? so this is will be the output okay then you have the else statement else else not eligible okay okay what does this uh, statement means if you are Malaysian, then if you are 21 years old and above, you are eligible. Else, you are not eligible. So, let's look into this else. This else is belong to which if? It's belong to the first one, right? If you see it in this case. So, would that actually answer your questions? Because uh, your problem just now is if you are Malaysian and if you are 20 years old and above, then you are eligible. If not, you are not eligible. But in this case, if you put it like this, it will become if you are Malaysian, uh, then that, then the, you do the F statement, else you are not eligible. Okay, so it, it is quite uh, a different actually. Okay, 
quite different from the first, uh, the second one here. It would become if you are Malaysians, then if uh, you are 21 years old and above, then you are eligible. Else, not eligible. Not eligible. So for the second statement here, the else actually is belong to the second if. So it it will actually checking two condition, Malaysian and 21st years or 21 years old and above. Only then you can say it is eligible or not. So this, this is what we call as a dangling else problem, if else problems. Okay. So these two, uh, these two, three actually would differ. I uh, will derive a different meaning. So this ambiguity uh, must be eliminated. So this is how actually the new. Uh, uh, tree structure for if else uh, statement okay so what they do is they want to check whether they have a match or unmatch if they have because the the if else statement if statement they have two type whether they have a else or, or or if they only have a if if statement if statement alone if then or if then else so match would be the one if it is uh, if then else and unmatched would be if it is only have if then statement then you will get this kinds of three structure okay for the problems just now okay another term here that we need to understand is isomorphic eh? isomorphic two grammar are said to be uh, isomorphic if there is one to one correspond between the two grammar for every symbol of every rules means that it quite similar eh? quite similar for example the following two uh, grammar are seen to be isomorphic simply by making the following substitutions okay so this is the first grammar this is the first grammar this is second grammar so it is said that these two grammar is isomorphic if it can be one to one means that here this is substitute a this substitute it with b okay and this small letter A, that's the substitute with Y. And this B is substituted with uh, a, a with X and B with Y. So we say it is one to one. You can replace it uh, uh, from one grammar to another grammar, one to one. Okay, so because they have a same structure, eh? they have a same structure. So we say that the two grammar is isomorphic. Okay, so that is a uh, and another terms okay let's look into the problem determine whether the following grammar is uh, ambiguous if so uh, show two different derivation tree for the same string of terminal and show a leftmost derivation corresponding to each tree okay so this is uh, the grammar here yeah, the production rules okay s goes to a s B, S, S goes to A, S, S goes to C. So they start from S, so they can derive it from A, S, B, is S, and they start uh, derive the non terminal S here. Okay, they, so the, the, the result they get is A, A, C, B, C. So another derivation is they get from S, so S they use the second, second production yeah. rules. Okay, only then they use the first rule, they also they get the same string. So it is ambiguous because they can produce the same string with different derivations. Okay, uh, so this is the derivation example, the leftmost derivation example for both of the uh, derivations. Okay. Now we look. We want to look into the passing problems. Okay. Okay, normally passing problem, uh, they have an algorithm. Okay, Alg they call it a passing algorithm. So passing algorithm is needed in the syntax analysis. And so this is the syntax analysis. We need a passing algorithm. So what is a passing algorithm? It is actually a, a grammar. Okay, so given a grammar, a string of input symbol. When you when you have a grammar, you have an input symbol. Determine whether the string belong to the language or of the grammar 
and if so, determine the structure. So that is passing. In order to determine whether the, the string, the input string actually is belong to the grammar or not, we need what we call as passing. And passing is a, a step, it's a process to determine whether the string is in the language or not. Eh? It's in the language or not. So normally there are two, two ways to do it, whether we want to do it top down or a bottom up yeah uh, it, it will depends on the sequence of derivation three okay so now we look here this is example of passing okay for example we have an english sentence okay uh, given a grammar c and a string of input symbol decide whether the string in is in lg okay also determine the structure of the input string okay <coughs> The solution to the passing problem is will be yes or no, whether whether the string is in the language or not. So yes or no. Okay. So let's look into the example here, the, the sentence, the English sentence here. The boy hugged the dog of a closed neighbor. That is the sentence. So the one down here actually is the grammar. Okay, is the rules, is the production rules, is the grammar for English sentence you can you can uh, google it actually is it's quite the same yeah? it's the same actually uh, if you for the english sentence if you look into the other notes in the internet yeah down here is a grammar so it can start from the sentence down to the uh, the the variables or can start from the sent the from down here from the variables to the sentence as well okay it depends okay all right so you can do either way yeah? uh, either top down from the sentence or you can do it from bottom up yeah so the here the is article boy is a noun hug is a verb the is article dog is a noun of is a preposition a is article Clause is adjective, never is a noun. Okay, so here uh, uh, we, we want to do it in a uh, bottom up, yeah, from the sentence. Okay, so article and noun actually is come from noun phrase. Uh, it's actually is come from noun phrase. So verb is a verb. Article noun and other noun article noun is a noun phrase again. Okay, and uh, adjective noun. Uh, this is adjective and noun. They call adjective noun is a noun phrase as well. Okay. Okay. And then a noun phrase is a subject. Okay. Verb is a verb, noun phrase. And preposition. Okay. Preposition and a noun uh, article and noun phrase. It will become uh, a noun phrase. Okay. And preposition, noun phrase will become, let's say, they combine it together and become verb direct object. Okay, so, so actually, if you read it from down here, subject and predicate. Okay, subject uh, and predicate can be classified further, instantiate further, become verb and direct object. Okay, and then uh, for the direct object, it can be uh, instantiate further, become a noun phrase. And preposition phrase okay and the preposition phrase can be classified further into preposition and noun phrase okay then the noun phrase actually is is a combination of articles and noun phrase okay so the, so that is how it is read if you read it from the top okay so this is actually what we call as passing okay uh, from the sentence to the top structure or from the top structure and get it into the sentence. So there are two ways to do it. Okay, so uh, for a next lecture, we will look into what is a relations and closure. Thank you.